Installing rock treads on non-removable rubber soled wading boots is not difficult, but does require a few specific tools and some care. Let's get started. Prior to installing rock treads, make sure your wading boots are dry and relatively free of dirt. Many wading boots with rubber non-removable soles come with locations already established for screw-in small metal studs. These same holes can be used as locations for rock treads, but don't feel that you're limited to them, as rock treads can be placed just about anywhere on the sole. It's a really good idea to lay out the pattern you want for your rock treads prior to any drilling. It's also important to remember that you need to cover two boots with the rock treads provided. You may find it helpful to separate the discs into equal stacks prior to laying out a pattern. Various rock tread patterns can be found on our website and you can duplicate them if you like or find a combination of several that work for you, depending on where you'll be waiting and the type of boot you have. There's also nothing that says you have to use all the discs. Although they're fairly light, unnecessary weight is just that. Pretty much no matter what arrangement you choose, the rock treads will greatly improve traction while waiting. When you have the rock treads placed to your satisfaction on one boot, prop the boots up and produce the mirror image of the first boot on the second. If necessary, you can rearrange both yet again to match. You're adding another layer to your boot bottom, so be sure to put the discs in a relatively even pattern because you want to step on an even surface when walking or wading with your rock treads. Don't get too close to the edges of your boot bottom, as you may not be able to attach the lockdown nut inside the boot if it's too close to the sidewall. A grease pencil of contrasting color works well for marking where holes are to be drilled. Once you have the locations marked for each disc on both boots, Remove the discs, but lay them out in roughly the same pattern as you had on the sole of the boot to help you keep track of the locations. You're now ready to start the drilling and installation process for affixing the rock treads to the bottom of your boots. We're going to do only one boot at a time. This will include drilling and a temporary test fit of components. Locate the quarter inch drill bit in the hardware bag and secure it tightly in the chuck of an electric drill. Cordless drills really make things easy. If your wading boots have a removable insole, take it out now. Sims wading boots have insoles that are not removable, so you'll need to drill completely through them, then add a thin aftermarket insole later. Lay one of the wading boots on its side and measure to make sure the drill bit will completely penetrate the sole of the boot and that approximately one quarter inch of the drill bit's tip will be exposed inside the boot. A piece of tape placed on the drill bit works well as a visual reference for a stopping point. You may notice that there's quite a difference between the sole thickness at the heel and that at the forefoot. It's a good idea to start at the heel and drill all the holes there before moving on to the thinner parts of the sole at the arch and the forefoot. When you're drilling, try to keep the drill bit perpendicular to the sole, not at one of these off angles. Do not, under any circumstances, place your hand inside the boot during the drilling process, as this is extremely dangerous and could cause significant injury. Hold the boot only on the outside. The drill bit may want to pull deeply into the sole, but hold it back if necessary. Once you feel the drill bit fully penetrate the sole into the interior of the boot, work it back and forth a few times to really clean out the hole. A fairly significant amount of material will likely be removed. Now that you have the feel of the drilling process, go ahead and drill the remaining holes at the heel. It doesn't hurt to give each hole another little shot with the drill to make sure all the material is cleaned out. When you've completed the drilling process at the heel, move up to the arch and forefoot and mark the correct drilling depth once again on the drill bit. Then, continue the drilling process at all the remaining marked locations. As before, go back with the drill and make sure each hole goes all the way through and is relatively free of material. The next step is to do a temporary install on this one boot to make sure that everything's going well. Open up the boot as much as you can and find the holes you drilled through the insole. 
insert a lockdown nut into each one of these holes until the wide, flat part is flush with the interior sole of the boot. This can be a little tricky, particularly up by the toe, where you really have to go strictly by feel. You may find it helpful to use one of the two longest screws in the kit. Poke the long screw in to better help you find the hole inside the boot. Make sure you've filled all the holes with lockdown nuts. Now it's time to select screws of the appropriate length for each hole. You've probably noticed that there are a boatload of them, way more than you'll ever need. This is because different wading boots have different thicknesses of soles and we didn't want to leave anybody out. You may find standing the screws up vertically to be the easiest way to identify different lengths. You also might find it helpful to arrange the screws according to length. To determine what length of screw is appropriate for the heel holes, insert one of the second longest screws into the countersunk side of the correct disc for one of the holes on the heel. Place one of your hands into the boot and put a finger against the appropriate lockdown nut to hold it in place. Insert the screw into the hole and use a Phillips head screwdriver to begin tightening the screw. Keep tightening until the rock tread is well secured to the bottom of the sole. It's okay to compress the sole material a little bit. You don't want the discs to spin freely. If the end of the screw protrudes up above the interior sole of the boot, it's too long. So unscrew the screw and perform the same test with the screw the next size smaller. An electric drill driver will help to speed the entire temporary fit and assembly process greatly. Ideally, you want to feel the tip of the screw inside the boot, but it shouldn't extend above the interior sole. Screws that are too short most likely won't even be able to thread into the lockdown nut. So, once you've identified the correct length of screws for the heel, assign however many are needed to each boot. Repeat the installation procedure for the remaining treads on the heel portion of the one boot. Make sure their arrangement is consistent with the layout plan. Move forward and perform the same test to determine the correct screw length for the arch and forefoot. Sometimes it's a real judgment call. Whatever the case, you really don't want to have the end of the screw poking you in the bottom of your foot every time you take a step waiting. Although not essential, we strongly recommend a complete temporary fit of all hardware on both boots just to make sure everything is even and done correctly double and triple check to confirm that the rock treads are properly placed in the correct position. All the screws should be tightened down significantly. You should even go so far as to insert the liner back into the boot and give the boot a barefoot test feel to confirm there are no screw heads poking through. When you're completely satisfied with the results of the temporary fit, it's now time to permanently install your rock treads. This should be done one boot at a time, one tread at a time. Start by unscrewing one of the screws and removing both it and the rock tread. Then, remove the lockdown nut from the interior of the boot. You can use the screw to help push the lockdown nut back out. Snip or cut the tip off the red turbo lock permanent thread locker. Get hold of the lockdown nut and apply just a small drop to the threads inside the narrow end. Place the nut back into the hole from which it came. Then repeat the assembly process with the screw and the disc. This time, however, once the screw's been tightened down and the thread lock allowed to set, the connection will be permanent. Repeat the adhesive application process and install for each of the treads on both of the wading boots. And that's all there is to it. Go over your handiwork one more time and congratulate yourself on a job well done. Your new rock treads will provide you with years of comfortable, safe, and secure waiting.